Han Dynasty, if you have to describe what their um, fashion style is, then you will say international. Uh, China received the influence from other uh, neighboring countries and or neighboring tribes in order to make their fashion pretty, pretty international and cosmopolitan. Uh, I always say students that um, the capital of Tang Dynasty, it's called Chang'an, uh, but it used to, it is the current Xi'an. Uh, it's in the west, rather, you know, in the middle of uh, Chinese territory uh, in Xi'an. Uh, and that is almost like a New York. Uh, it is an international city with a lot of merchants from Central Asia, West Asia, sometimes from East Asia, like, uh, you know, three kingdoms or um, Japan and from the northern tribes. Uh, and then many, many people spoke different languages, but there is one reason why they came to uh, Chang'an. They wanted to trade with China. So uh, Tang Dynasty was very uh, affluent uh, through the trade. So what did they trade? Obviously, in relation to history of East Asian costume, silk was the most lucrative uh, product. People in Central Asia, West Asia, they wanted to bring silk home. But uh, in order to have a trade, China should also want something, right? Like uh, they cannot always just give a silk, right? In return, you have to get something, right? So um, what people, what Chinese people wanted to get is horses, great horses from uh, Pamir Mountains, like a northern part of India, or uh, they need medicinal herbs. Medicinal herbs are you know, like a specific to certain topography, right? So the medicinal herbs. And then they wanted, obviously, gemstones, or they would, uh, you know, use grass. Grass was produced in Central Asia. Um, and then, then eventually, uh, they embraced these more visitors or traders, and, and um, they liked this kind of exotic, musicians. So um, entertainers from Central Asia would come to Chang'an in order to uh, create the music and work. And if you ever studied the history of a musical instrument, <laughs> in fact, all the musical instruments, uh, the origins are in Central Asia, like nomads. Their life is kind of simple and they don't live in a large village, right? So they compose a lot of music. So violin or mandolas uh, or lute uh, or what else? Um, guitar, you know, any uh, instrument, string instrument, it origins are usually somewhere in, in Central Asia and it is spread to Arabic world, it's spread to Roman Empire, European countries. So that's how we now see like violin, cello, you know, these string instrument uh, families. But in East Asia, we also have uh, string instrument families like a Kuching. Does anybody know what Kuching is? <laughs> you, you don't know. Uh, my other classes, some students actually studied Kuching as a child. But you know, like over shamisen, like a three-line Japanese string instrument. So the whole string instrument started to blossom 8th century in Central Asia, and some of them came to China as an entertainer. So this is Chinese pottery. Uh, this technique is called three-color gla glaze. There are three colors used. So uh, it's called three-color three glazed ceramic. And that is also what uh, the, the traders wanted to buy from China. China had advanced technology to create these ceramics. But anyhow, that's the technique. But in it, what is interesting to us is uh, Chinese artisans paid a lot of attention to nomadic clothes. So obviously, they, they don't look Chinese. They have a bit different head. It's called um, Phrygian's head. Uh, and that is like a nomadic people's head. Uh, it's a little bit triangular, like a falling down. 
uh, and they have the hat, and then their uh, tunic uh, is a long jacket, like a one piece, almost like a jacket skirt kind of thing. Uh, and then you have usually central closure, <clears throat> or they wear this way, sideways. But what I'm saying is, um, this one is following Chinese conventions toward the right, toward the right side. Uh, but often they would show that it is uh, uh, heterogeneous, like a group, uh, by closing to the left side, not to the. But usually the nomadic tunic, you have a closure in the middle, like a somehow like somewhere in the middle, and then they usually have a boots on, like a boots, like this. Chinese people or Japanese or even Korea, as you see, they didn't have these boots, you know, like they had the shoes, right? Uh, but they didn't have a boots, so that is distinctively nomadic. But if you have to ride the horses or these camel style animals, then boots is a natural idea. Uh, you know, like, uh, it's a muddy, you know, the, the streets are not so clean. Um, so that is the uh, Musicians from uh, Kucha, usually they came from Kucha. In my civic road class, students study a lot of different towns in Central Asia. So these are musicians from Kucha, and uh, they usually ride a camel, they have a big carpet, and on top of it, they sit a little different way, and uh, <clears throat> hairy face, and eyes a little bit sunken, so these are more like a Turkish uh, people, ethnic groups. Uh, and they play uh, like a wind instrument, and they sing. This guy is a singer, <clears throat> and they were you know that a lot of musicians were living in Chang'an because people uh, like to go into this kind of exotic bars. And then another common Central Asian citizen in Chinese people's eyes are these merchants. And this particular merchant, he came from Sogdia. Uh, Sogdiana is, is the name of the country. So, so as a person, we say a Sogdian man because he came from Sogdia, the city, but the country is called Sogdiana. And where is it located? Currently, it is a part of uh, Kyrgyzstan. Um, and um, it's um, it's in Asia Minor, meaning it's a slightly northern part of Turkey. So he traveled all the way to China, especially Chang'an. And what what does what does he bring? Like you know, gemstones, you know, or, or Sogdian, um, you know, herb, medicine, or dates, you know, the the fruit dates and other things. And then he comes and he will buy silk and go back home. But this is um, the depiction of nomadic dress. So again, like a long tunic, and then sleeves are tight. Do you see the, the idea of the sleeves are tight? Chinese people had really elongated big, you know, sleeves, right? But you don't need those. Uh, and then remember shenny, like it's coming to the food, and, you know, it's a tapered end, right? But that is not suitable for travelers. So it's always like a knee-length tunic. And then uh, this person has that similar hat, a uh, Phrygian hat, and then he has the backpack, <clears throat> and then most importantly, he has this bottle, and these are called the flat flask. So he needed water to travel, uh, and originally this flat uh, flask is made of animal intestine. Like let's say you got the, how can I say, like a camel's stomach, then you will use the stomach to make this kind of a flat flask because it's very durable, right? Almost like a rubber uh, durable. Uh, and then eventually Chinese people is going to imitate this flat flask in ceramics. So in an exotic way. Um, so, you know, he had a big nose, a sunken eyes, and a lot of hair. Again, you know, he belongs to Turkish ethnic group. Uh, so that was the idea. 